I'm on the phone with MDI head football coach Mark Shields. And, uh, Coach, uh, yeah, it was a pretty good start to the season, an exhibition victory against Ellsworth on Friday night. What did you see when you looked at the tape over the weekend? Yeah, uh, you know, we felt pretty good coming off the field. Uh, you know, our goals going into that game, once again, had nothing to do with the scoreboard, um, has nothing to do with winning or and losing that game. I know that's true for uh, Coach Crawford uh, from Ellsworth as well. Um, our goals going into that was, you know, looking for better execution. I mean, our first scrimmage versus Waterville, we told the kids, you know, we're looking for effort more than execution. In this game, we told the kids we're looking for effort and execution, um, you know, because now we're looking to solidify some spots going into our first game versus Dover Foxcroft. And, I thought looking at tape, the coaching staff, we broke it down yesterday. Um, you know, we were pleased with a lot of things we saw, but once again, you know, early in the year, still a lot of mistakes being made on the field at certain positions and, you know, just some mental mistakes, and that's fine once again this early in the season. But, uh, yeah, I mean, looking for improvement week to week, that's what we talked to the kids a lot about. And, uh, you know, now we have to, you know, look at that tape, learn from it, and now apply it to our next opponent against Dover. I, I thought that uh, I, w I was really impressed with Colby Lee in terms of his ability to break out and, and get through the hole and pinch just gallop for some yards. Uh, I knew he was fast on the basketball court. Uh, I, I wasn't as sure how fast he was going to be on the football field, and, boy, I'll tell you, he's got some jets. Yeah, Colby's looking real good here in the early part of the season. Um, you know, had a, a good year last year, I thought, as a sophomore, learned our system really well, and um, started to come along as a back later in the season. He always had decent speed, but I thought later in the season last year, he was starting to, to run a little stronger, you know, between the tackles, and, you know, now we're seeing that, you know, a year older, and bigger, more experience, more confidence. Um, you know, he's not afraid to run between the tackles at all. Uh, he's hitting the hole really hard, and, uh, you know, it's nice to have a back that, you know, all he needs is basically a half a step in, on his opponent, and he's going to be hard to, you know, run down from behind. So, uh, yeah, he's looking real good. I was happy with, you know, my backfield overall. I thought my quarterback played a solid game, uh, you know, running the ball a little bit more. Uh, you know, I thought his pitch – game looked really good when we were running our option stuff which we did not look good at last year and you know a lot of that's on me because we didn't practice enough um during practices we've been working on that hard this year and you know throwing the ball he still needs to get up on his toes and, and throw a hard ball i think he started to do that later on in the game and started hitting some of his receivers and my fullback uh, croy albee looked strong running the ball and uh then i'm splitting time with chris Farnsworth and Ezra Johnson at my other halfback, and uh, and those guys did a nice job. Those guys are both athletic, fast kids, and you know, I, it's nice to have some some depth back there. And uh, you know, right now those guys are, are looking pretty good. Passing wise, uh, as you mentioned, I thought Andrew did a nice job. There were a couple drop balls that were uh, receivers were wide open, and I don't know if that was just because they had to wait or. Um, what the issue was, but it, boy, I'll tell you, if you can uh, shore up that area to go along with it, with a rushing game, uh, a ground game, um, MDI is going to be tough this year. Yeah, you know, you're right, Chris, and that that was another focus of ours. I mean, for me, you know, running the offense, two big goals was to throw the ball better. Um, we worked real hard on that in the preseason, and then once again, our option game and, and getting – uh, Andrew Phelps running the ball a little bit more, getting him in space, and then pitching it to our backs if need be. And um, you're right. I mean, sometimes I was a receiver uh, in high school, and sometimes when you're too wide open uh, and the ball is up in the air and you have plenty of time to think about it, sometimes that will occur. But uh, you know, overall, we have some good athletes out there to catch the ball, and uh, you know, we're going to try to get those guys in space. I, I give Gus Reeves credit too. I thought he did a a very admirable job as a backup quarterback as well. Yep, Gus is a, you know, for starters, he's a super smart kid and, uh, you know, a guy that played football when he was younger and, and then he kind of stepped away from it for a few years and now he comes back his senior year and, 
you know, he played quarterback when he was playing in the Acadian Football League, so I immediately thought, okay, we need a backup quarterback. This is our guy, and, and I knew that he could handle it as smart as he is and mature as he is. And, yeah, he's running the, the offense really well, and if, you know, something were to happen to Andrew, which we hope does not, uh, I feel very confident putting him in that spot. Uh, so what do you work on this week in preparation for the Foxcroft Academy game? Yeah, so this week here is a big week, I, I feel, defensively. Um, they are very, very athletic. They're very strong up front. They have strong backs. They're everything you want in a football team, uh, well coached. You know, they're a team that had some injuries last year early on in the season, and they had some younger guys step in. And those younger guys got a lot of experience throughout the season, and sure enough, they get to the playoffs in the quarterfinal, and they upset a good Madison team. Uh, you know, now these kids are all coming back, and they have that experience and that confidence. And they're they're one of the top teams in our league. I think they're one of the teams to try to beat because of that experience that they got, and and they have some real good athletes. So defensively, we got to work real hard. They have to be disciplined because they do a lot of stuff, much like us, where they'll run some option type stuff. They'll, you know, have the running back go one way. The quarterback will fake it, go the opposite direction. They'll do that. They'll throw the ball out of that. Um, you know, really high-powered offense. Looking at their game tape so far against their two opponents, they have been unstoppable. So defensively, a huge week. We really have to tackle well. Their backs are elusive and they run hard. Um, so we have to, you know, make some plays defensively, you know, get some turnovers and, and try to control what they're trying to do. And then offensively, um, they have two really strong middle linebackers that we're seeing on tape, and those guys are in on every play, it seems like, number 55 and number 31. And, you know, so we're going to have to get a helmet on them every play or we're not going to be able to run our offense. So it's, you know, it's a big week for us. Um, it doesn't get any tougher coming out of the gates, and we knew that going into the season. So, you know, we're we're excited for the opportunity. What about injuries? Uh, come out pretty injury free from the exhibition game. Yep, I'm knocking on wood here in my office. Uh, we did, uh, as far as I know. Sometimes you never know. Monday afternoon rolls around, a kid right. shows up and says, "Oh, I did this in the game, coach." But right now, I haven't heard anything. Um, the kids seemed healthy coming off the field. Uh, we were able to get our starters off the field after the first half and rest them, and then our twos and threes had a good opportunity to get out there and play some ball, and uh, I didn't see anything that seemed like anybody got hurt. You never know, but overall I think we're a pretty healthy team. Uh, probably, I'm assuming, working on special teams, kickoffs, returns, because that didn't happen during the uh, exhibition game against Ellsworth. Right, so this will be the first week that we actually will be dealing with that in the game itself. Right, We didn't have to worry about it against Waterville and not so much against Ellsworth the way we had the you know, we set up the game ahead of time. But, right, so we've been practicing this stuff right from day one. Um, so that will be, you know, we'll continue to do that and a stronger focus. And now we're, you know, two days are over for us. So we always had that morning practice that we could condition and work on special teams, and then we'd have the entire afternoon to work on defense or offense. And now that changes. So we just have one practice a day from 3 to 5.30, and you have to, you know, you get your. We do our special teams. The very first thing we do before we move on to offense and defense, so it cuts into some of the time for those. So, you're right. That's going to be a focus. And in a game like this, which I believe is going to be a close game, uh, it could come down to special teams for sure. Who's going to be your uh, kicker this year? At least, uh, you know, planning on on doing the kickoffs and the the extra points. Yep. Right now, it's Drew Rich. Uh, Drew kicked for us last year and. He really came on strong at the end of the year, had a lot of confidence, was kicking the ball real well. Uh, we didn't have him kicking off because we had Isaiah Keene, who was, had a strong leg and could get down the field and tackle people. But right now um, we've moved Drew to that position as well. So I believe he's kicking off as well. We'll have to make that decision throughout the week. But uh, he's definitely our point-after guy. And uh, in terms of punting? Yeah, once again, that's kind of open. We have two guys right now, Chris Farnsworth and Croy Albee, who looked pretty good in practice. Um, the thing about Chris is he's one of our better long snappers, so he he may be long snapping to Croy because if you got a good you know long snapper, you got to have him down there doing it because that's probably more important than the actual kick itself. So right. and plus he can get downfield well because he's fast and athletic. Um, 
so we'll see. That one's still up in the air. Okay. And then uh, kind of some breaking news, the, the MDI Belfast game that was originally scheduled for Friday, September 9th, has been moved to Saturday night, September 10th. Right. So Mr. Dow, my AD, came to me uh, last week, the end of the week, and asked if we would be okay uh, moving that game. Apparently, um, there's a lot of games going on that night, and there's a concern that maybe there's a lack of officials. Um, that's the word that I got. Uh, Belfast, they said that they were good with it, and I looked at our schedule and talked to my staff, and uh, we decided that that would be fine with us as well. So we'll move that to the 10th. It actually works out well because the Red Sox play that afternoon so we can air the game on uh, on WDEA uh, Saturday night. Oh, I did not know that. So that's awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. All right. So, Coach, uh, have a good week. We'll talk to you on Thursday as we get ready for our, our opening weekend of, uh, of football. It's hard to believe you're in school today, and uh, it, it's just uh, summer's over. Yeah, it's done. It's done. We are yeah, the first day of school, and uh, I guess uh, no more days off for Coach Shields in the summertime. <laughs> Got to go back to work. All right. Well, about time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. All right, you too, Chris. Thanks. All right, you too, Chris. Thanks.